And welcome to the three-quarter mile Richmond International Raceway. Hello, I'm Ken Squire. Live coverage here on World Sports of the Richmond 200. Down below me, some 36 cars are now at the ready to go for 200 laps, 150 miles. A purse of $123,000 at stake in the second event of 1991 for NASCAR's Grand National Competitor some extra moments to warm the engines on a very chilly day here in Virginia. Great temperatures yesterday, dropped 20 degrees today. Let's see if we can get a word, Ken Stabler, with a man who uh, it sits on the pole, and that's not going to happen now. They've buttoned up that front row, and they're moving everyone back away from the field as we get ready to go green here this afternoon. It's 200 laps the distance. Let's take a look at the starting grid for today's race, 36 strong. Here's how they'll line up. Jeff Burton is on the pole, his second pole position, Virginia driver, youngest of three brothers, number 99. Beside him comes Jimmy Hensley, well-known name in Grand National ranks out of Ridgeway, Virginia. In row number two today, Bobby Lamonte out of Texas, his Oldsmobile, back after that harsh wreck a week ago down at Daytona. And the defending Grand National champion, Chuck Brown, originally out of Oregon, starts on the outside of row two. For row three, Elton Sawyer is there from Chesapeake. Peak, Virginia with his Buick and Tony Hirschma is scheduled in car number one to start on the outside of row three from Northampton, Pennsylvania. In row four, it's Davey Allison out of Hueytown, Alabama, Chevrolet, the Haviland car, and alongside is Kenny Wallace of St. Louis, Missouri, his Pontiac that's pretty well known in these ranks. Row five, Dale Earnhardt, and with him comes Mike Waltrip. For row six today, it'll be Harry Gant. And alongside of him, Daryl Waldron. Row seven, that's going to be Bobby Dodder and Tommy Ellis, the 88 Grand National Champion. For row number eight today, there you have Ed Barrier, the Mid-Atlantic champ for a couple of years, and Butch Miller out of Coopersville, Michigan. Row number nine is Todd Bodine and Morgan Shepard from Conover, North Carolina. Row 10, Dale Jarrett, Hickory, North Carolina, and Rick Craven from up in New England, Concord, New Hampshire. Row 11 is Ed Ferry of uh, Saxonburg, Pennsylvania, a car dealer up there. Joe Nemechek of Lakeland, Florida. In row number 12 is Jack Ingram on his uh, lap of honor around the tracks of America, his final year, five-time champion, and Davey Johnson. Row 13 is Ward Burton and Steve Grissom from Alabama. Row 14, Robert Presley and Dave Resendez from Massachusetts. For row 15, it's Dale Shaw out of Center Conway, New Hampshire, and Jeff Gordon from down in Indiana. In row 16, Troy Beebe from Modesto, California, and Cecil Eunice. In row 17, Jamie Obie from North Ferrisburg, Vermont, and Tom Peck of Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, or McConnellsburg, Pennsylvania. And rounding out the field, Barney McRae of Colchester, Vermont, and Tommy Houston of Hickory, North Carolina, starting dead last. Watch Houston. Remember what he did a year ago at South Boston, 28th to 1st in the Grand National Race. Nine Chevrolets, ten Oldsmobiles, nine Buicks, six Pontiacs, and two Fords comprise the field that will be taking green in our live coverage on World Sports of the second Grand National Race of the year. Race number one, Daytona, a week ago on the high banks. Earnhardt flew to victory in car number three. This field has a very different complexion than the one we saw last week at Daytona. There are four drivers in this race who didn't even qualify for the Goodies 300, another four who never completed the first lap there, and five more who weren't around at the quarter waypoint. That's a third of this field that didn't do much racing at Daytona. In addition, the pole sitter at Daytona, David Green, didn't even make this race, and the pole sitter here, Jeff Burton, started 33rd on the Super Speedway at Daytona. The whole field here is covered by less than one half a second in the single round of qualifying time trials. So it's a good, tight, fast field, but very different from what we saw a week ago. And Mike, one car that has not rolled is Tony Hirschman, who was scheduled to start six today. This morning, he heavily damaged his Oldsmobile in a practice crash. He was hoping to get it back out. He had to do additional work and start last. That is not to come to pass. That car not rolling out. 35 cars now on the field. The little crash this morning was an indication of a big track difference. You know, this guy had a car that qualified six right up in front of the back, but the track changed so much today with the big temperature drop that these other guys are wondering what to do also. Neil, let's take a look at the weather here at Richmond as we get set for a start. That tells you all you need to know. 
chilly out there. Need your mittens today. Temperature down in the low 40s at the present time. And that's warmed up a bit. And that breezy little 16 mile per hour wind, that's what raises happen. Yeah, that wind chill. I kind of felt that on the opening out front. I wasn't going to say anything, but I'm from Alabama. It was pretty cool to me. Car field in tow. The pit procedure that has been so much the talk will be so much the talk today. And if we have the occasion for a caution, we pretty much expect it. We anticipate we'll be getting back to that subject considerably before the afternoon is over. And Neil, both pace cars are coming back on the track. Incidentally, as opposed to Daytona a week ago, the Alma Langley pace car, which is bringing the field around now, will be parked down in turn one as per usual. And the second pace car, which was parked at turn two on the big super speedway, now will be parked in turn three here at Richmond. Yeah, the, right now the pit thing is a big scramble. Everybody's trying to figure it out, and they're rolling with the punches. They're changing it from race to race, and I think this is a look-and-see attitude today. We'll see how this thing works in NASCAR reevaluate. Uh, it's hard for me to figure out sitting here in the booth. I know the guys in the pits got their hands full. Bobby Labonte, who fell back to 12th, has pulled himself back to 6th after that pit stop period, and is looking good. Four car, whoa, spin on Tommy Houston, the kid that started dead last in 36th position and had worked his way all the way to eighth. Racing to the flag, Earnhardt's there. Allison second, Gant third. Tommy Houston. They're still talking about last year when he started 28th, and we got a wreck up in turn number three, one looping, and one car crashing to the bottom of the racetrack into the barrier just at the entrance of pit road. Jeff Gordon, the USAC midget champion, 19 years old. There you see, there's the one car coming around. Elton Sawyer. And Elton Sawyer in trouble. Here's Elton's car back underway. I'm not so sure that there wasn't some kind of liquid in that corner. We had a car, the 31 car was, Grissom was really smoking. All right, we're under caution. It's the fifth caution of the day. We're working lap number 95, Earnhardt's in front, and we'll be back with more of the action from Richmond in a moment. In the booth with uh, my mentors for this thing. I'm up here with Coach Neil Bonnet and, and Ken Squire. And we've had a couple of incidents uh, on the track. First of all, we had Tommy Houston. He started last, worked his way up to eight. As Neil said, it's like he ran into something, a liquid or some type, on the track and spun. Then we had a second incident that involved Jeff Gordon and Elton Sawyer. And we're under caution right now for that reason. Guys, let's take a look at those incidents. First, uh, what happened out here to Houston in the car number six? The car broke loose, getting, getting up off the corner right there, but I thought I saw a car go previously and put a little bit of liquid down because right after this, we had some more cars get loose in the same place. The car turned around too quick. He was down in the line where he needed to be. He wasn't in the wrong place on the racetrack, so something caused the problem. You know, Steve, he should get the record for most times around out here today. Triple spin on car number six. Well, like Neil said, it's like something slick. He was on a, a correct line, running where he needed to be. Here's the other incident we see right here. Uh, coming around on the bottom, it's like in turn four. It's going to involve Jeff Gordon, the youngest driver. There's Jeff right there, swapping the ends, hitting the end of pit wall. And then Elton Sawyer is going to come into this somewhere along the line. There he is up at the top of your screen, so it's coming in backwards. Boy, thank goodness, Kenny, that they put those uh, barricades up here. That's barrels full, filled with sand, or he'd have had a pretty good shot right near that pit wall. Let's go to Mike Joy at the Fram Pit Communication Center. Neil, they call it the Fitch Safety Barrier, and it was designed by John Fitch, famous sports car racer and also an inventor. Jeff Burton was the pole sitter for this event, and now he's sitting uh, on our hot seat and sit out there where he'd like to be. Tough break out here, but tell me, were you folks planning to go the distance on tires? Tires a big question here today. Yeah, we were going to go the distance on tires. Goodyear did a real good job designing the radial tire. I had no problem with going the whole way. We had only lost about uh, four tenths of a second on speed from the time we pitted, so we were, we were ready to go the whole way. A lot of folks could have blamed something, anything else for that spin. Takes a big guy to climb out of the car and say, I goofed. Well, you, if you lie, you lie to yourself and you start believing it. So, uh, you know, I, I was in the groove. Uh, I was trying hard. Got it, it just got away from me, unfortunately. But it's a real good race car, the armor. Food Line Chevrolet was really running good. Had a Chevy motor in it, which surprised a lot of people. It was really stout. Okay, Jeff Burton had a good run here at the start. He'll have some more. Let's go back upstairs. So the end of the wall does not collect the cars, and those barrels designed to protect them do their job. And Joe Nemechek, that outstanding freshman from a year ago, no sophomore jinx on him, he's showing fifth position. 
putting a lap on Jeff Gordon, the Arkansas kid who won 16 midget races last year at the United States Auto Club and won the championship. And remember, that kid at number one is only 19 years of age. You're going to hear a lot about him. He won four sprint car races. He's a comer. The boy's doing a great job. He's had been in these cars very long and really performing. We've got some action in and a bit. The car running hot. The only thing hot in Richmond, Virginia. Pit Communication Center. Let's take a look at the uh, complete standings on this race number two of 31 that makes up the $4 million Bush Grand National Series for 1991. And again, next Saturday, off to Rockingham with all this great talent. And as we look at this field and down through it, get some thoughts from uh, the experts that were watching topside and around the track today. Ken Stabler and Neil Bonnet. Joe Nemechek certainly had another outstanding run. He looks stronger and stronger. I thought Darrell Waltrip was indeed blessed today. He was in that incident, did that spin, got it righted and didn't get hurt. He was able to still come back and as you see on the board, get himself a good finish in 11th spot. Boy, too, this thing's a big test bed right now for the V6 programs. And to see these things, we had very little engine failures in these things. You know, Earnhardt, Davey and the guys are doing some experimental stuff. They've got people building those motors, and they're getting them where they're better and better and better. And we're seeing the lap times. We saw this entire field within a half a second from the guy that made the set on the pole that had to go home. So the, the engine programs are really going. I think the gap that the Winston Cup guys had, even though we had five Winston Cup guys in the top six, that equipment is there for those guys to use, and I think the Bush Grand National guys are really closing that gap. As they move back to the championship car for its uh, final inspection, let's go back to pit road. Here's Bill Parsons. Here's the big wreck coming off the fourth turn. There. Is, uh, I'm sorry, this is where the board slid down into the, the barricade there, and the sand barrier really saved some damage to, to Gordon when he hit, if he'd hit that inside wall. And Gordon was able to come back and finish in 17th position several laps down in that Ford, one of only two Fords that entered today's race, which uh, brings up the question, what do you think is going to happen to the Fords out here, Neil? They're, they're putting out a sincere effort right now to try to get the motor program along. Uh, the Chevrolet and Buick development started with IndyCars years ago, and they had a little bit of a head start. Now Ford's really doing some work, and they're trying to close that gap. And I'll tell you, it's hard to... The, while Ford's closing the gap, Chevrolet and Buick are really accelerating their program. So they got some work ahead of them. And now NASCAR has this Bill France Award for the manufacturers in this $4 million series, and it's going to put a lot more pressure on these car manufacturers. Uh, up until now, this has been pretty much a freelance operation, but when you put up a manufacturer's award, you're going to see the factories putting more emphasis on this series, and, and to me, this is the third most important series in the country now, for the money and for the kind of competition, the TV they're getting. Ken, we've always heard win on Sunday, sell on Monday. I think they start winning on Saturday. They're going to sell them on Monday also, so the factories are jumping there, supplying the parts of these guys. It's critical for them to win these big races on Saturday also. There they are, battling for fifth spot. 
Kevin Frank with him. Kenny Wallace in the 36 car. Just out of view to the right. I think Jeff Gordon is one lap down. He made an unscheduled pit stop uh, front between, I think, the second and the third caution flag. So I think he's one lap down. But the rest of these cars are battling for position. Dale Earnhardt fourth, Kenny Wallace fifth, and Jeff Burton in the 99 car sixth. CNN Motorsports presentation of the Goodrich 200 is brought to you by the more than 550 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the right parts and the right price. 140 laps complete. We're back under yellow for the fifth time today. It happened up in turn two. Jeff Gordon was the principal car involved. You see Jeff there sideways. And somebody in the white car doing a heck of a job. I think that was Steve Grissom. Check that. Joe Nemechek. Joe Nemechek. And then Ward Burton on the high side got stopped. But, uh, no damage. And uh, Jeff Jeff ought to be able to get back in. And uh, he, I don't know if he'll... It, normally, he would want to get in and get four fresh tires. But now, right. now that it's a penalty, uh, he may elect to stay out. You know that it's probably flat spotted somewhat. So it'll be interesting to see if he stays out uh, and, and, and elects not to change tires. The racetrack is swept clean, and we're ready for a restart here in the Miller Martinsville 200 as Harry Gant uh, leads the field. He chose not to stop uh, during that brief interlude, and uh, right behind him, another man who kept on going, the number 25 automobile of Jimmy Hensley. Elton Sawyer in third place. Big news, Dale Jarrett, who started way back in 23rd place, has moved to fifth, and Labonte and Chuck Bound, who made their stops, are in sixth and seventh. Okay, Brock, we are going to get a start. The green once again waves over the half mile at Martinsville. And a great jump start by Harry Gant. The fast cars are on the inside lane there. So right behind Gant is the 25 of Hensley. And right behind him is Elton Sawyer. Up the back straightaway, Harry Gant, that familiar green and white, number seven. Bobbles just a little bit coming out for him, but keeps it in line and uh, carries on, although Hensley moved in a little bit on him as they head down into turn number one. Well, Gann and Hensley certainly... And in that fourth position, the 11 car, Jack Ingram, uh, who's making sort of his farewell tour to Bush Grand National Racing, or racing in general for the last year after a long and very productive career, so he hopes to, to win some this year. What a blaze of glory. Well, he's got a great chance to do it. He's one of the finest of uh, the drivers in this kind of competition as so we watch Elton Sawyer trying to get by Jeff Gordon in that blue and white number one Ford. Uh, uh, Jeff uh, not running well today. He's a lap car and holding out of that position. And there's our leader, Harry Gant, the old bandit in the green and white number seven car. In front of him is the USAC National Midget Champion, the number one Ford. That, of course, is Jeff Gordon. And Jeff, with the Ford car, in all honesty, has got a little, a little bit of a handicap. Ford has not had the, nearly the years of research and development in their V6 engine. That's why they're out here now. It was enough to put him out of the lead. Oh, we have got a crash bucket. Harry Gant is involved in it. And that 72 car, Tracy Leslie, he tagged both Chuck Bound and Harry Gant. There goes Bound. He getting anyway. 72, Leslie sits on the sideline. It up in turn number four. There's 72 Leslie. He gets on hook coming off turn four, gets way sideways, and he's now crossways in the racetrack. There is 63 bound. He slides past Harry, tags him, and the right front, good hard hit. Here comes Presley. Everybody else slowing down and kind of sliding by, but 72 Leslie continues to slide backwards. And he is going to nail Pound, who's parked on pit entrance. He tags him again, and there is the 59 car, Robert Presley, getting hit as well. So, three cars. Kenny Wallace was had that left uh, inside wheel hooked up on the curb, and he could have spun it without a whole lot of trouble. It looked for a moment like 44 Bobby Labonte might have been the big winner in all that when he dove down. Oh, and we have got a spin. It is Jeff Gordon in the number one Ford has spun out. Everything looks all right. A little damage to the right front corner of the car. But that will bring out the caution flag. Exactly what Kenny Wallace didn't want. Stay with us. There's only a couple of laps remaining of the Martinsville 200.
31 V6 engines have come to life on Pitt Road here in Barberville, Florida. The field is made up of 14 Oldsmobiles, five Pontiacs, one Ford, five Chevrolets, and six Buicks. Should also mention that there are nine rookies uh, in this field led by Jeff Gordon who will start outside row number two. He's the 19 year old. It's uh, mainly a sprint car race moving over to the Grand National Series this year. His best qualifying effort to date. The field is on the second of four pace laps here at the Volusia County Speedway. Let's show you the starting grid for today's Spring 200. On the pole, Chuck Bound, the seventh time in his career. Robert Presley outside him. In the second row, we're looking for Bobby Dotter and rookie Jeff Gordon. Row number three will be Jimmy Hensley and Jeff Burton. The four it took 29 laps, but we've got our first caution on the speedway for an incident coming down the front straight. That was the leaderboard. As of this moment, 30 laps, Robert Presley, Jimmy Hensley, Elton Sawyer, Chuck Bound, and Bobby Dotter. But there were a number of cars involved in an incident as coming off of turn four. We had one car spinning sideways. We have a replay on it. Let's take a look at that right now. Now that's the Jeff Gordon car which triggered all the mayhem sliding into that is Ed Barrier, Jeff Green, Rich Burgess, the Cecil Eunice car is there. We also see damage on the Tommy Houston machine and also Ward Burton. So that is six cars involved in our first caution of the event. It came out. He broke free of Dave Brzezendis. Uh, he was uh, quickly tracking down Bobby Dotter, who was in the fifth spot. Wall is currently riding number six and looking very, very strong in this race. As we see the Richie Burgess machine, heavy damage uh, to the front end of that race car. And uh, it certainly will not be as competitive as it once was when the green flag uh, came out uh, just a few minutes ago. Well, the Dover Plains New York driver has done as much service as he can in the time that he has trying to stay uh, as close to the lead lap as possible. But you see he's being held up because the pace car had already passed a position on the track. He will go at least one lap down. The field is reformed, and we will go back to green flag action here in just one more lap as Mike Harwood tells the field to form up behind the Pontiac safety car. We noticed that Jeff Gordon, who was involved right at the beginning of that wreck, may have suffered the least amount of damage of any race car, which happens sometimes. You sort of get spun free of the accident. His car damaged just some right side damage on that fourth Thunderbird. That we've seen at any time in recent years because of those financial straits. It certainly was an interesting circumstance. Everybody always likes to cheer for an The field is reformed, and we're about ready to go back to racing. As lining up on the outside is the lap car of Jeff Gordon. The USAC Midget Champion will sit back and watch as Robert Presley leads them back to green. car doesn't seem to be any the worse for wear. In fact, he's just the kind of block up for the other cars that Robert Presley likes to see. Hensley would love to move around him, but Gordon's car, as you mentioned a few moments ago, Mark, doesn't really seem to be that much the worse for wear. The lone Ford in the field is finding its way around the preferred groove of this racetrack and holding up second through the rest of the field. Jeff Gordon may be a rookie here for the Bush Grand National Series, but he has run this racetrack twice. Once when it was dirt, once when it was asphalt in sprint cars. So he knows his way around this particular track. A lot of difference between the two racing automobiles, but nonetheless, he's very comfortable because he's been here before. As we mentioned earlier, nine rookies are in the race. Seven of them official candidates for Rookie of the Year. Cecil Eunice is the points leader in that category with Jeff Gordon second. They have both had their problems today. Uh, for today's running of the Spring 200, of course, your winner, Kenny Wallace. The defending race champion, Tommy Houston, was second, followed by Butch Miller in third. Jimmy Hensley with a fine run in fourth. And as you just heard, David Green happy with his fifth place performance. Sixth place to his brother, Jeff Green. The Owensboro, Kentucky driver is making that town proud today. Bobby Labonte finished seventh, followed by Todd Bodine, Steve Grissom, and our pole sitter Chuck Bond never really had his car quite right today. He finished tenth. In the eleventh spot, the rookie Lonnie Rush, twelfth to Elton Sawyer, thirteenth to another rookie driver, Jeff Gordon. Robert Presley led this race early. He winds up fourteenth. Fifteenth spot goes to Chicago, Illinois' Bobby Dodder. Sixteenth spot, Tracy Leslie. Jeff Burton winds up seventeenth. 18th, Dave Brzezendis, the Florida native, Joe Nemechek, ends up 19th. And rounding out the top 20, the Pennsylvania driver, Davey Johnson.
Unofficially, as we have it, 21st goes to Cecil Eunice, another rookie driver in the series. 22nd spot to Rich Burgess. 23rd, another rookie. The rookies seem to have congregated there in the second portion of the field, Ed Ferree. Ward Burton was the 24th place finisher. 25th to Ken Schrader, who was running well early, but then had problems on lap 122 and fell from the event. Ed Barrier from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, finishes 26th. And Pat Jones involved in that hard crash in turn four, which he suffered a apparent foot injury. Sits back in the 27th spot. 28th to Troy Beebe, the 29th position. Tommy Ellis, who had mechanical failures. Tom Peck in 30th. This could be his last Grand National race. That team said they were just about out of money. 31st, Richard Lassiter climbed into the Gary Nice machine. And that is your entitled uno entire unofficial 31-car finishing field for today's race. Let's take a look at last week's highlights of the event in which Kenny Wallace won in our Haviland Racing Updates. Let's take a look at the starting grid for today's Mountain Dew 500. Your sixth different pole sitter of the season, Jimmy Hensley in the number 25 Oldsmobile from Ridgeway, Virginia. Outside front row, Jeff Gordon, the reigning USAC midget champion. In the second row, it's Kenny Schrader making a rare Grand National appearance from Fenton, Missouri, and rookie Troy Beebe in one of his best qualifying efforts yet in the series. In row number eight, Bobby Dodder from Chicago, Illinois. Beside him from Asheville, North Carolina, Robert Presley. Row number nine, Ernie Irvin and Ed Barrier. In row number ten, inside from Gunnersville, Alabama, Mike Oliver. Beside him, Alabama neighbor, Steve Grissom. Mark Martin will start 21st with Tom Peck outside of him from McConnellburg, Pennsylvania. Then it's a rookie, Jimmy Bound, Chuck Bound's brother, and Elton Sawyer. Row number 13 will be Kenny Gregg, a local driver here from Hickory, late model stock driver. Todd Bodine from Chemung, New York, will start 26th. The 27th starter, rookie Richard Lassiter running in traffic and we have trouble up in turn four trouble in turn four as jeff gordon has shredded a left rear tire and dale jarrett has also spun to a stop and a great move by mark martin going up high into the speedy drive dale jarrett's car you see him spinning around and coming back onto the racetrack jimmy hensley snuck by that will put dale jarrett down a lap this is our speed camera in turn four, and there you see Jeff Gordon. This was our second caution of the day. Dale Jarrett and Gordon involved in that, and we've noticed in the last few moments that Dale Jarrett's car is running 260 degrees. Keep your eye on that one. He may bring out a yellow. Race leader Jimmy Hensley is down on the inside. The outside cars are a lap down. We're back under green for the fourth time today. the race leader the car in the second position is jeff gordon the man who sat on the outside of the front row but he is a lap down trying to get himself back in front of hensley as jimmy spencer and todd Bodine did a few moments ago to put himself back in contention nothing if you try to let the car move you're going to get right you're going to roll right in the path of the oncoming traffic and the, that's the most dangerous thing to do is try to make a move let him pass you then go ahead and get going one of the two fords in the field of mark martin which are Two cars out of the stable of Bill Davis, the other being Jeff Gordon. Mark Martin has been given the black flag by NASCAR for smoking. He will have to come on to pit road to check what the problem is. Tough break for Mark Martin earlier when I talked to him before this race. I said, how are you running after that final practice? He said, someplace between decent and incredible. I think I can win this thing. Well, now he's more decent and in trouble. <laughs> because he'll be coming out of pit road as the crew goes to the attention of that Carolina Ford dealers Ford will stay under caution here another few laps as there's some fluid down on the speedway that the safety crews will be paying attention to Martin making a rare Grand National appearance in fact he is the only driver who has ever taken Ford to victory lane of the Bush Grand National Series his last victory Myrtle Beach South Carolina back there and they were celebrating the 4th of July last year you see that car sitting on pit road it may go a lap down Jimmy Hensley the leader now passes by him with the pace car, so that puts him down one, and they now start to push it away. So a major problem for Mark Martin. When that caution flag came out, he was running very close to the front of the pack. You know, drivers work so hard to maintain an even keel when there's trouble, but it's always the crew people that you can tell the reaction from, and it was pretty clear uh, when the Martin car came to a stop that the problems were terminal. Hensley has been out front from the drop of the green. 
right now being chased by Jeff Gordon and Dave Resendiz. The second place car, Ed Faree, has got all kinds of traffic separating him from Jimmy Hensley as Jeff Gordon attempts to get a lap back. And he has done it. The USAC midget champion from 1990, all of 19 years old, is showing experience well beyond his years. He is used to a car that weighs 1,400 pounds at most if it's a sprint car. 950 if it's a midget. He's running 3,200 pounds around the Hickory Motor Speedway and pulling away. I guess I like things that go fast. Experience life on the NASCAR circuit as you've never seen before. Call now and order Bill Elliott Racing to Victory and see what life is like for Bill Elliott in and out of Victory Lane. Meet the men responsible for the high technology and the marketing of the man known as Million Dollar Bill. It's Million Dollar Bill from Dawson Bill. Look out, the bird is on the loose again. He's got one thing on his mind, driving towards number nine. Down to Victory Lane at the end. Yes, it's Million Dollar Bill from Dawson Bill. Look out, the bird is on the loose again. And he's got one thing on his mind. Order Bill Elliott racing to victory. Don't wait. Call now. To order, call now. 1-800-524-4000. That's 1-800-524-4000. This shouldn't come as any great surprise, but we're back under caution here at the Mountain Dew 500. And this was a summary of the race up to this last caution. Jimmy Hensley has been your race leader from the outset. Nine cautions before this one for 35 laps. As we mentioned just a moment ago, the average race speed just a tick over 61 miles per hour. There are still 16 cars in the lead lap, according to NASCAR scoring. These are the two cars that are officially out of the event, Jimmy Spencer and Mark Martin. The rest of the cars on the lead lap... Bobby Labonte, Jeff Gordon, and Joni Majeff. Now our current leaderboard is Butch Miller, the leader, Jeff Gordon, second, Nemechek, third, Hensley, fourth, and Ken Schrader, who came onto pit road 50 laps ago for right side tires, is up to fifth. Behind him in position number six, it's Ed Faree, then Tommy Houston. They're still very much in this race. What a great job by Jeff Gordon uh, this afternoon. He told me before this race, I'm just getting more comfortable. I'm getting at home with these race cars every single week out. I feel like I'm just getting more in tune with what this race car should feel like under race conditions. He's qualified real well, and he's put in a great race so far today. Jeff Gordon still very much in the hunt, although Butch Miller had pulled away uh, under that a long green flag period, long for this race, uh, before we got back to that last caution. But he's still very much in the hunt in that number two spot. In the third spot, remember Joe Nemechek, and he's now in trouble as Jimmy Hensley goes to work on him. Hensley's got the spot. That's the blue car working out of turn four behind leader Butch Miller. And he will set his sights on second place. Jeff Gordon goes flying up the racetrack into the wall and over in turn number two. Trouble for the 19-year-old sensation brings out the caution for the 15th time on lap 248. Running second, Jeff Gordon pops the wall. His best race to date in Bush Grand National Series racing will come to a disappointing end. But he showed a lot of spirit today and a lot of experience well beyond his tender youth as Troy Beebe's car is pushed back after a long day for the fourth fastest qualifier and there's a replay it just went flying up the racetrack and once you get out of the groove that's trouble one thing is certain jeff gordon is a comer he's going to be around this racing circuit for a long time just a very young driver just 19 years of age what do you think rusty wallace butch miller looks like he's holding all the cards right now he's got three aces he's maybe trying to draw up the bottom of the deck get one more ace and he could walk off of this victory well butch is looking awful good right now i gotta tell you he's a veteran short track racer he's probably won more short track races uh, than most in the last volusia county has run strong today but isn't going to get a good fish and finish he had some problems uh, early on and he's... then jeff gordon who had a broken tie rod got that replaced he's back out there Butch Miller, Jimmy Hensley, third, Joe Nemechek, and right behind him, Kenny Schrader. Six laps remaining. 